Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this video, we are talking about Twilight Time titles from Hamilton Book. I picked up 20, count them 20, Twilight Time titles from Hamilton Book. And um, here, I, I, I don't talk about Hamilton Book a lot on uh, the main YouTube channel. I talk about them fairly often on Patreon. But it's kind of been a secret. Hamilton Book, I know there's been a couple of really big YouTube channels who have kind of blown the whistle on Hamilton Book and let everybody know about them. But those of us who've known about the site for a couple of years, it's a wholesale, you know, it's a bookseller. It's an online bookseller, Hamilton Book. You can find it if you want to find it. Uh, they sell a lot of overstocks. They sell new books as well, a lot of overstock stuff. They've gotten into Blu-rays and they pick up wholesale lots of closeout Blu-rays and they, they turn around and sell them cheaper than like anybody. We talk about big lots prices and stuff like that. Well, uh, the stuff that shows up at Hamilton book is, is, it's amazing. Uh, so I was not going to talk about the twilight time titles on a video, but so many of you have reached out and said, did you see the twilight time titles? at Hamilton book that I feel like if enough of you comment to me about one thing, I'm like, this is a video that it's, I have to address this in a video. So yes, I did. Uh, I did grab 20 titles from the, the, the Hamilton book sale of the twilight time titles. Um, what you know, let's just, I'm just going to show you what I bought. I haven't watched most of these. They've just arrived in the last day or two as I'm recording this, but I grabbed the new centurions. This is a seventies cop movie. Indicator has a version of this, but before Indicator put it out, Twilight Time put it out, and uh, George C. Scott, uh, Stacy Keach. It's a it's a cop movie. It's a gritty cop movie directed by Richard Fleischer. Um, let's talk more about Hamilton. Not let's talk about Twilight Time. Uh, this was in my order for when when Twilight Time Twilight Time is out of business now. For all intents and purposes, Twilight Time is now gone. They had to be going out of business sale. Screen Archives Entertainment has taken over some of the remaining inventory and is keeping it keeping it for sale. But when the stock is gone, my understanding is when the stock of this stuff is gone, it's gone. When Twilight Time announced their going out of business sale, these were like $15, which was a great deal. You know, Twilight Time is a boutique label. They pay a lot of money to license these things and they go all in so you know this release in particular we have uh, an isolated music track we have a commentary we have an oh we have two commentaries um the theatrical trailer which is not really an extra but they all come with booklets they all come with uh it's not reversible art but it's um you know so like if you take the disc out you have more art to look at they put a lot in they were known for their prestige um, and so their releases tended to be a little bit on the pricey side, 40 bucks, you know, 30 to 40 bucks retail price. So when they decided that, uh, the time had come for them to go out of business, they threw this big sale and I filled my cart with things. And the shipping on my order, it was like a hundred and something dollar order. The shipping was going to be like $20 and I just didn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I thought I had lost these movies. Not not lost them. For the record, all of these movies are on DVD. Most of them are on DVD. And I'd, I'm fine with watching it. I know some of you guys are not because goodness knows you let me know. But a lot of us are fine watching a DVD if it's the best way we can get our hands on something. 40 bucks? Watch a DVD. Sometimes I'll just go for the DVD. Um, but I had kind of made peace with the fact that, okay, well, these are gone. Then the Twilight Time title showed up on Hamilton Book during the last drop. They do new drops once a month where they add the new titles. $7.95 to $11.95. I think 95 might have been 99 cents. So between eight and $12 cheaper than Twilight Time. And uh, Hamilton Book has like a great flat rate shipping for, you know, it's like four bucks for shipping. So I just, um, I just loaded up my cart because really uh this is it you know twilight time is gone these titles you know the 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 fella that runs that that buys for hamilton book he goes by golden wheels online and he has said that the more support that hamilton book gets the um 
the better it is for business. He can get better things. He can invest that in more stocks. So hopefully this is not, I'm going to get backlash for this video. Um, whether they tell it to me or not, whether people come to me and say like, it's a secret. I'm talking about Hamilton book on a YouTube video. I'm going to get some backlash, but the man who buys for Hamilton book has said, the more people come and buy, the more support we get, the more business we get, the more deals we can get. It helps us to grow and the Blu-ray market is really taken off for them. So, um, fingers crossed that this is in all of our best interest, but I'm letting you in on a secret, but golden wheels for what I understand, he just bought like all of the remaining, uh, stock for certain titles, like what was left, they just took it all in a lot and turned around and they're just blowing it out. So my mentality was it's now it's the Elvis song. It's now or never, you know, it's true. It's, it's, it's this at this price or it's find a DVD. That's what we're looking at. Or maybe import from indicator at great cost. So I went all in on this 20 titles, like I said, and, um, if I don't like some of them, they have value. They have equity. This is something digital doesn't have. That's another argument against digital is that purchases have equity. They can be resold. They can be shared. They can be gifted. They can be traded. They have intrinsic value. You guys, the Quiller memorandum, this is George Siegel, who is, uh, we've talked about him a lot in the past, uh, the hot rock, it, you know, just shoot me. And he's now on the Goldbergs as the grandpa on the Goldbergs, but man, he was a leading man and he's fantastic. So, um, I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm tempted to just like give you a capsule for every one of these, but I don't think, I don't think we have time for that. And I don't think I have enough to say about that. Uh, I got three of these old musicals, by the way, these will all pop up in a future review Palooza when I actually watch them. This is just kind of to talk about the deal to say, yes, I saw them. Here's what I got this stuff. Some of this was gone like that. I placed an order the night the drop happened and the next morning, uh, seven of them were sold out. <laughs> so they, they went fast. Uh, my gal Sal, this is Rita Hayworth. And I love Rita, Hay Victor Mature as well. Um, I love Rita Hayworth. There's a, new, there's a new box set coming out for Rita Hayworth from Mill Creek Entertainment. We helped break the news on social media that that was coming. I was very proud of that. Um, and a hammer set as well. So if you want to know more about that, check out our social media, but love Rita Hayworth lady from Shanghai, probably my favorite Rita Hayworth movie, Orson Welles, just fantastic. Uh, but I haven't, these are, there are three musicals. This is 1942, um, from the same theme, mother war tights. This is 1947. And you see all of these are kind of hearkening back to turn of the century vaudeville kind of a thing. Ah, oh, see, they're out of order. Where's the other musical? I dropped them multiple times. So here's the other musical. Hello, Frisco. Hello. <laughs> this has uh, Alice Faye, John Payne. John, who, who's familiar with John Payne? Miracle on 34th Street, uh, 99 River Street. I think it's the noir. He's in, he's in some good movies. He's, he was a good guy. But here's before that. This is 1943. And uh, look, it's old timey vaudeville. You feel like you're walking down Main Street, USA. I'm walking right down the middle of Main Street, USA. Fair use. We're talking about vaudeville. We're talking about this kind of movie. Hope you're paying attention, YouTube algorithm that hunts for people singing music in this in their videos. I got Beat the Devil. Uh, this is uh, Humphrey Bogart and who who else is in this? It's Bogey, Jennifer Jones. Uh, it's John Houston. That's the other name I was looking for. John Houston directed this. Um, a company, I think it was Film Detective. There's a company that puts out they restore public domain movies and put out superior versions of what's been available before like they get the film elements from like ucla or wherever and then they put out the best versions that they can but this is the this is an actual twilight time um pressing of this and, and those the 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 film detective versions are usually burned on demand they're pressed and not pressed they're uh B, like blue bdrs that's the word i'm looking for uh but this is like a a nice It'll be, it'll be better is what I'm saying. And uh, again, you know, you get, the, I'm, listen, I'm telling you guys with Twilight, I love the Twilight Time label. I, I have not had a lot of Twilight Time titles because they cost about as much as a Criterion Collection version. Criterion Collection stuff goes on sale all the time, but Twilight Time, again, you know, you place an order for something that goes on sale. The shipping is, they didn't do media mail. 
they they didn't do that so you'd be looking at i think the base shipping rate was 895 one movie 895 shipping not sold through amazon as far as i know it was a, it was cost prohibitive and so i have some but i didn't have a lot now i've got oh i got like a couple of dozen so sort of sherwood forest i've reviewed this movie before we have a robin hood themed video actually we have i think maybe we've reviewed it twice you know what? There's a video talking about this, and there's also a review at serialatmidnight.com because Mill Creek put out a Robin Hood box set. I say a box. It's not in a box, but it's a multi-disc set that had a DVD of sort of Sherwood Forest. This is Hammer. It's a Hammer film. Peter Cushing is in this, uh, and it was it was Richard Green reprising his role from the Robin Hood TV series from the 50s. And I think to this day, it's the only time that a Robin Hood actor from a TV show reprised his role in the movie because there's been a lot of Robin Hood movies there's been a lot of Robin Hood TV shows I don't think they've ever carried one actor over from one to the other um, anyway directed by Terrence Fisher the great Terrence Fisher you know he's one of those um, one of those uh, Mount Rushmore figures for Hammer films Hammer horror but look this is not horror this is a swashbuckler and I love shout out to Hammer swashbucklers Hammer horror is a good gateway for people. But Hammer made a ton of different kinds of movies and they're all good. They made film noir. They made uh, swashbucklers like this, the Pirates of Blood River. Um, they made a lot of really cool adventure. They, they were, whatever was popular, whatever was selling. I guess they didn't make any Westerns but because they were British. But um, they did a lot of cool different things. And so if you're only familiar with like Horror of Dracula or whatever, when this Hammer box set comes out from Mill Creek, I highly recommend it because it's going to be a great sampling of all the different stuff. There's a detective story in there. Uh, it's good stuff. So, sort of Sherwood Forest. Why is this case blue? We have 20 Twilight Time titles. One of them has a blue case. Twilight Time was known for those clear cases. We do still get the booklet. We do still get the reversible, or you know, the the art, the inner artwork. But we have like an echo case. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't want the echo case. I want the white case. Oh, the, the clear case. So now i got to track down a clear case. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, Kings Go Forth. Again, never seen it, but it's got Frank Sinatra. It's got Natalie Wood. You know who else it's got in it? Tony Curtis. It's got Tony Curtis. And I've been watching a ton of Tony Curtis. I have the Kino Lorber Tony Curtis box set that we're going to talk about in the next review palooza the review palooza is basically ready to go i'm just trying to find an hour where i could record it and then like four hours to edit it and upload it those things take a long time um, but i'm really digging tony curtis he's fantastic uh and some you know of course i know all the familiar roles like some like it hot and all that stuff but digging into some of the other stuff like this i like sinatra natalie wood is a vision she's just amazing um Let's see. Ooh, music by Elmer Bernstein. Um, who is the director of this? I don't... Oh, uh, Delmer Davis. Dave, Delmer Davis. Dave said that weird. Okay, moving on. Baby, the rain must fall. This is Steve McQueen as sort of a rockabilly musician coming out of the 60s folk whatever scene, traditional scene. And it's got uh, Lee Remick... Um, directed by Robert Mulligan, who, uh, that's the director of To Kill a Mockingbird. And I just watched, was one of these Tony Curtis movies, Robert Mulligan. I want to say it was The Great Imposter is Robert Mulligan. Um, yes, this Tony Curtis movie, The Great Imposter, Robert Mulligan. <sighs> See, it's a steel trap, but I can't always get the, the information out of the trap. It's locked in too tight. Um, this is, I'm really interested in this, uh, Steve McQueen, of course, one of, one of the greats and, um, music, right? That you guys know how I am with music. So I also grabbed the tall men with, uh, Clark Gable, also Rita Hayworth in this. Nope. Strike that. <laughs> Jane Russell, Jane Russell, Rita Hayworth, not the same people. Um, though I do like them both a lot. They were both, um, kind of bombshells for their era and kind of the same era too what is this uh also um robert ryan is in this as well one of the great noir actors robert ryan clark gable i'm kind of riding high on because he's in the carol lombard collection you know carol lombard was married to clark gable 
And so I've been making my way through that. Again, coming in the next review Palooza, but um, watching some of his less famous roles, he's so good. He's just such a natural. Got a book about Clark Gable, Carol Lombard. Uh, all right, this is a Western. This is 1955, which is perhaps, you know, 55 to like 58, peak 50s Western era. Um, I don't know that it ever got better than 55 to 58 or so. Hill the Crane. This comes highly recommended to me by uh, my pal Eric Griggs, the uh, the curator of the Pop Trash Museum. Did the Dick Tracy commentary with me. He said, I really need to check this out. So total blind buy for me. Honestly, if it had not been for his recommendation, this would have just gone right past me because it's fairly generic looking in its artwork and it doesn't have Gene Simmons, Guy Madison, um, I don't know. I don't know anything about these people. I know Gene Simmons. I don't. I can't name three Gene Simmons movies. By the way, not like uh, not not Gene's not Kiss Gene Simmons. She's not going. She made. I was gonna say she's not going for cold gin, but she might be. Uh, so anyway, I have no um, no expectations for this movie. I'm going completely blind, which is honestly the best way to go into a movie. Also. Hussy, starring Helen Mirren, 1980, I want to say, yeah, 1980 Helen Mirren, so we've got, um, I, I was going to say peak Helen Mirren, but that's not true, peak Helen Mirren is like right now, like she never cooled off, she's always just been amazing, around the time of Excalibur, Excalibur's what, 81, I want to say, and I love that movie, that's my, probably my favorite King Arthur movie, uh, but, um, story of a woman who is forced into uh forced is not the right word but she chooses to prostitute to put food on the table for her family and so uh we'll give it a shot because that's the kind of thing you know when hussy goes away i think again i think maybe there's an indicator version of that a lot of these movies have been picked up in the uk by indicator i say a lot some of them Beneath the 12 Mile Reef, this has been on my list for ages. I've really wanted to grab this from Twilight Time, but the price was just never right with that $9 shipping. Listen, even if a title goes on sale for $15, $17, $18, you add $9 shipping, <laughs> it's not a deal anymore. And I have to make my money go as far as I can. You know, I try for all we talk about, you know, I did just pick up the Gamera box set. We like we splurge, but I'm also budget minded. And I know so many of you guys are as well. And I think you know where I'm coming from. It's always trying to find that balance. And uh, 12, beneath the 12 mile wreath needed to have the right price point. And finally, it, it finally did. So the original bedazzled those of you who are familiar with the brendan fraser movie with it's a fraser it's not fraser just for the just just public service announcement it's brendan fraser uh and elizabeth hurley those of you who know that movie um it's a remake of a 60s movie it's got dudley moore peter cook um who directed this the music by dudley moore he did the music for this movie as well directed by why are the director produced and directed by stanley donnan um Never seen it. Oh, I'm burying the lead on this. You know who's the, uh, so the Elizabeth, uh, her, uh, yeah, the, the Elizabeth Hurley care. Hold on. Is Elizabeth Hurley. I've switched to Elizabeth's. Um, this is the still trap I'm talking about. Who is Hugh Grant's, <laughs> Hugh Grant's ex. Well, they were never married, right? Oh, geez. Bail. Pull the ripcord. We are bailing out. You guys, it's Raquel Welch. That's the bottom line. We're not even talking about the Hugh Grant movie. We're talking... The, there is no Hugh Grant movie. Oh, geez. Okay. Bedazzled. 60s. The remake with Brendan Fraser. Um, oh, my gosh. Total, total mind blank. The Big Fix with Richard Dreyfus. This is Rich... I gotta, uh, I've got to find my Richard Dry, Richard Dreyfus. That's right. That's right. There it is. Richard Dreyfus and The Big Fix. I was in a movie called The Big Fix. It's from 1978. Um, this is a rare movie. This is one of those movies that's hard to find. And uh, I mean, DVD, I'm sure it's available on DVD. But finding this Blu-ray has been like I knew it was around. But uh, you pay boutique prices for boutique releases. And so... The whole town's talking. Edgar G. Robinson, see? But times two. It's, look at this, look at the back. Eddie G meets Eddie G. 
if you think Van Damme was the first one to do the twin versus twin movie, uh, no, it goes back to, what is this, 1930, 1935, we're doing a twin movie. They're using the technology of this guy looks just like this guy, this other guy. Uh, a mistaken identity, wrongfully accused kind of a movie from the absolute golden age of cinema, the peak for me. I don't know. There, there are people who say, so VB, Vanessa, uh, Patreon supporter Vanessa, the, so she's big on the twenties and I need, I need a hook for them. Like how, how does one get into the twenties? How does one think that the twenties become their favorite? I, I gotta, I gotta know. I gotta know how you get into the twenties. Maybe it's just a natural progression. And from here I'll be like, you know what? The teens were the best. They, they'd done it all by 1914 and they never, they never top it. Before they'd built the Hollywood land sign, it was all over. Betty Grable in The Pinup Girl. It's not V, it's just Pinup Girl. Uh, Betty Grable, fantastic um, mid century, what is it, 50, oh, 44. Um, one of the great sex symbols of the World War II era. I think this is even a World War II set comedy. Um, let's see. Ba -ba -da -ba. No, I don't see. Yes. <laughs> well, it says. Um, where does the sentence start? Tossing superb condos, brothers dancing, the swinging styles of Charlie Spivak and his orchestra, and the rolling revelries of the skating vanities, and you'll gladly put a pin in this World War II era delight. And Bob Hope comes on, he's like, Hey guys, what's going on? We got Betty Grable backstage, yeah. <laughs> it's unexpected Bob Hope impersonation. Will success spoil Rock Hunter? I don't know, let's find out. This is an upgrade for me. I have a Jane Russell, not Jane Russell, Jane Mansfield. Should I be doing this video? Do I scrap this video? It's very early in the morning. And clearly I'm not all here yet. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, it's not Hurley. Is it Hurley? Who's the, it is Elizabeth Hurley. I was confusing her with Elizabeth Berkeley from Showgirls. See, my mind just needed that like two and a half minutes to try to work it out. It is a, Jeez, you guys. Jane Mansfield, the great, <laughs> the great, the iconic Jane Mansfield in Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter with Tony Randall. Someone was commenting on Instagram um, just hours ago that these 50s and 60s, sex, this is 1957, these sex comedies from this time when the censorship was just starting to break down, the the tight reins from this era, because yeah, the 30s were the wild, wild west, probably the 20s too. I have to ask Vanessa about that. But uh, the censorship had really gotten, yeah, everything's kind of saccharine. It's very, very, um, there's a very specific studio tone, you know, happy endings. Even in like the the the, the Wolfman and the, like the sequels, the horror sequels, like I'm thinking specifically of uh, one of the, it's one of the mummy sequels, one of the universal horror, horror mummy sequels. And it's like violent. They set the mummy on fire. It's terrible. And then like, say, what do you say? We go get a drink, pal. And like, yeah. Bah, 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 bah. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's studios. It's like, well, you can set someone on fire, but we have to have a joke at the end. All that was breaking down by this point. Now, these are not subversive movies particularly. Well, they actually they are, but they're, they're finding ways to play with the system. You know, I'm going to talk about a Tony Curtis movie one more time. No, I'm not. We'll save it. There's a Tony, I just watched a Tony Curtis movie. I think it was 1958. And the, the things that they get away with in that movie, it's a Blake Edwards movie, The Perfect Furlough. What they get away with in that movie, it's a sex comedy without seeing any sex in, in the 50s. And that's remarkable to me. Uh, Captain from Castile. This is Tyrone Power. The, uh, the wonderful... <laughs> The wonderful Tyrone Power. Uh, it's Mark Mark of Zorro. Is it the? It's the Mark of Zorro. I it's, I I can never quite separate my Mark from my mask from whatever else <laughs> Zorro. Mark, right? It's the one the the classic '40s uh, Zorro film with Tyrone Power, where that's the one historic. Like I'm thinking Frank Miller's The Dark Knight. No, Frank Miller's. Oh, geez, why am I doing this? In year one, is it, is it Frank Miller's year one comics? Anyway, that was Bruce Wayne. Like he, When he had gone to his family 
to see a movie, they'd gone to see The Mark of Zorro, and it made a big impression. It's changed over the years. But um, when I was reading comics in the 80s and the 90s, that was what Bruce Wayne had seen, was the Zorro movie with his family. Tyrone Power. Jeez. Stay on target, Heath. Um, let's see. Oh, Cesar Romero's in this. Cesar Romero's fantastic, especially if you can find him in these roles where he's not camp. He did a lot of camp in the 60s, but in the 40s and the 50s, this is 47. Uh, we're talking about the Joker from the 60s Batman series. Like, ooh! But he was really good. Uh, I'm ending. This is the last one. Elvis, Wild in the Country. Elvis on Blu-ray in the United States is a tragedy. It's just non-existent. I mean, we have a few. We have a few. We have Viva Las Vegas. We have um, That's the Way It Is. I think it is. We have uh, a few. Kino put out a couple. They put out Clambake and Frankie and Johnny. Just two. And that was all they put out. I don't think Elvis does well in the United States. And that's tragic for me. I have most of these movies. I think I have all of his movies on DVD. But finding them in high definition has been a real challenge. Finally, Paramount Paramount Presents just put out King Creole, which is one of the best movies ever. If you if you dismiss Elvis as, or if you dismiss Elvis movies as just being, just saccharine crap, uh, watch King Creole and watch uh, Jailhouse Rock and um, you know Viva Las Vegas is a whole other thing. That's '60s, but the early ones, the '50s ones, uh, he has not yet fallen into that pattern that. Colonel Tom Parker put him in of just cranking him out uninspired songs uh, and this comes from early Flaming Star that's another one that's a Twilight Time release it's on the shelf right over here Flaming Star is very good and it's got Barbara pre I Dream of Jeannie Barbara Eden in it as well but this is 1961 this is um, it, there's a few of these that have uh, like German I think they're German German region free blu-rays and they've been in my cart for amazon.de for cuz that's the German Amazon for um like over a year and I still haven't bought them that this is one uh Kid Galahad I think is one there was a Twilight Time Kid Galahad I think it's gone I think it's officially out of print for those of you who are looking for more more Elvis Check Europe. They have them. They're region free. It's all in German. The, like the box art, it's all in German. But that's okay. It's the, it's the movies that matter, guys. So that's that's it. That's my Twilight. Look, I went big. You can see I went big. As I say to quote Elvis, it was now or never, and um, it was just a real. It was a real surprise. It's one of the most surprising things I've seen on Hamilton Book in the several years that I've been supporting their site. So the secret is out, but keep it keep it on the down low <laughs> hush hush and very QT um, so we'll talk about all these more in a future review Palooza and I'm off to familiarize myself with the IMDB career of Elizabeth Hurley not Berkeley eh, I'll do Berkeley too uh, guys thank you so much take care and until next time I will catch you later <laughs> <laughs>